We want to bring in CBS News senior national security analyst Fran Townsend. She was Homeland Security Advisor to President George W. Bush. Good to see you, Fran. Good morning. So we'll get to the wall in a moment, but let's begin with the president's comments on enhanced interrogation in an interview with David Muir on ABC last night. He said unambiguously that he believes waterboarding works. What do you make of him saying that? Look, I think some of this is harkens back to the campaign trail. What we know, right, no matter what he thinks or feels about enhanced interrogation techniques, it's not legal in this country. And so to the extent that the president would want to go back and return to those techniques, he would need legislation for which there is not bipartisan support on Capitol Hill. So. I I, I think we shouldn't, while the, the statements are in and of themselves maybe concerning to many Americans and frankly to many foreign allies, it's not possible to return to that without legislation for which we don't see political support. Now, there's been this draft floating around, this a draft executive order, I don't know if you heard about it, uh, requiring the CIA to reconsider using enhanced interrogation techniques. The White House says they have no idea where it came from. Uh, Pompeo and uh, Defense Secretary uh, Mattis said they were blindsided by this. Any idea w why something like this would be floating around or where it could have come from? You know, it's very odd. We've seen at least one report suggesting it, it's an old Romney campaign document going back years ago. Wow. So this may not even have come from this White House. It's not, it, it really is very murky and ambiguous. And you're right to point out, you know, two of his senior cabinet members have made statements under oath to Congress that they would not support this. Not to mention, you know, if you talk to the men and women of the CIA, many of whom suffered personal invest criminal investigations. Um, I, even if you could get legislation passed, it's not clear to me who you'd find to actually implement such a program hmm. anymore. Or who, which countries would allow the United States to host these black sites right. uh, in their countries. Because exactly right. That inflames the population of those specific countries. Mm -hmm. um, and even the president okay. himself recalled in an interview that uh, James Mattis said to him that he feels that he gets more out of people with beer and cigarettes than right. he does with enhanced interrogation. So I guess if it's just a campaign promise that he's putting out there to let the people know that he is sticking to the things that he said he would do. Um, but on the other hand, you've got every member of Congress, with the exception of Liz Cheney, I guess, mm -hmm. um, saying that this is not happening. John McCain, who was tortured, has said that we're not bringing torture back into this country. So where does the president go from here? Well, look, I think in fairness to the president, we have to understand that every president, when they come in, asks for reviews of certain policies that they disagreed with and they made clear of that on the campaign trail and the president is entitled to ask his federal agencies to review this policy he he's asking the question does it work and and that he's entitled to ask that question he may not like the answer he gets but he's entitled to ask the question and we ought to we ought to not sort of criticize him for asking questions. Right. And to be fair to the president, he did say to David Muir that he would defer to Mike Pompeo and James Mattis when the decision, uh, when he had to make right. that decision. But That's the other right. thing that he said was that he's talked to other people who said that torture yeah, is, who, I, is that's effective. Who, who are those other and people? And I'm sort of curious about that, too. If, you know, everything that I have, have heard, and I'm sure you, too, has indicated that torture isn't effective, that you don't necessarily get truthful information when people are under that sort of duress, the president says he's heard otherwise. What is the general thinking within the, the intelligence community on this? You know, I, I don't think that there is a single opinion about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that y there are those in the intelligence community who, go, hearkening back to post 9-11, when there was not a whole lot of good understanding and, and information about the structure of Al Qaeda and how they operated, believe that we did get information of value. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I say, you know, presidents are entitled to ask questions. They're, they just don't get to control the answers, yeah. right? And so that he's asking the question is fair. Um, and we'll see if they if, if they we even get an executive order that asks for a formal review. Um, as you, as you pointed out, it's not clear where this draft came from. Mm -hmm. And the White House has said they don't know, and they're not even talking about this today. They're turning to trade in executive orders today. Mm -hmm. uh, let's turn to that executive order, though. Uh, the president signed yesterday, ordering the construction of a wall on the southern border. From a national security perspective. Does the border wall move the needle? And if he's asking, he can sign that executive order, mm -hmm. but he needs Congress to deploy those funds. Sure. Um, well, there, there's about $100 million in the DHS budget that is, uh, could be directed towards the wall. Um, and I think that the president and the signing of the executive order said, we're going to get this started. Um, 
You know, look, you know, and this goes back, the idea of a wall goes back a decade. Right. In 2006, Congress passed this legislation. It was really forced on the Bush administration. And what we found during the Bush administration was this may not all be bricks and mortar. And I think that that still holds true here. You're going to find there's technology, there's fencing, there's a bunch of ways you can discourage people. To the extent you discourage people, you take measures that discourage people, make it harder to enter illegally illegal immigration is reduced and so the president is entitled I think to try and make it to discourage illegal immigration and to take measures that do just that but you're um, saying that the wall wouldn't be brick because when you hear that El Chapo can use tunnels to get right. drugs into the country they don't care about a wall I mean right. we're talking about immigration in this case but there's also he's talked about drugs coming across the border um, right. they don't necessarily walk it across the border now right. these days no that's right and so a wall is one, you know, some sort of physical barrier is only one piece of a more comprehensive program to discourage the illegal crossing of people and goods. So, Frank, before we let you go, though, I want to ask you about, uh, you talked about illegal immigration. Let's talk about refugees mm -hmm. and uh, this enhanced uh, extreme vetting. It already takes two years of being vetted by the U.N. to get into this country as a refugee. What more can be done? You know, it's a good question. The president referred on the campaign trail to this extreme vetting. We don't really know what that is. On the other hand, I would point out that President Obama, when he was not satisfied that we sufficiently vetted, also did a stand down, reviewed the process, did enhance the vetting. Um, and so the fact that President Trump wants to do a similar program where you have a stand down mm -hmm. is fair. The question is going to be, what more can you do? I mean, I think it's 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 the right question. We don't know the answer. yet. So, so Fran, ultimately, the president is doing the job of the people by asking questions is what you're saying. That's exactly right. And we ought to tell people while we make there's much fanfare with the signing of these executive orders. Often all you can do is conduct a review and ask questions doing them. But to make real changes, you really need Congress and legislation. All right. We'll have to see where it takes us. Fran Townsend, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you. it.